James Wollstoneholm was a member of NK for many years, dancing in plenty of the musical reviews undertaken by the company. And he also played the lead role in the Magic Faraway Tree at the Tameside Hippodrome. James was another member of our theatre and education team when he was older, touring Tameside and Stockport, performing Every Mother's Son, a joint project with Greater Manchester Police tackling car crime. James then went to performing arts school before becoming a professional performer, touring with shows such as Mamma Mia, and until March this year, he was appearing in School of Rock in the West End of London, where he once again teamed up with another NK patron, Matt Smith, who was MD of the show, and he wrote the music many years earlier for The Magic Faraway Tree. So, next in our Meet the Patron series, it's James Wollstoneholm. Good morning, James. How are you? I'm on it. I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. I've just been out uh, doing my exercise for the day. I thought I'd get out early before anyone else was in the park. Oh, right. Um, okay. And then I dashed back, had a shower and ready to go. <laughs> oh, amazing. So where are you at the moment? Are you in London? No, I'm not. I, I left London um, after School of Rock closed. Yeah. I left London because, sadly, work dried up. There was nothing. Um, so I'm actually back in my permanent home now in Liverpool. When you say work dried up, I mean, I guess it's had a big impact, the, the coronavirus on auditions and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, it has, yes. Well, look, we, we actually, School of Rock um, that I was in closed on the 1st of March. Uh, we were always going to close then. Yeah. Um, so we sort of closed just before coronavirus arrived. <clears throat> and then I was doing some work, um, some a little, another bit of acting work at East 15 Drama School. Mm-hmm. Um, I was booked to, to do that for two weeks. And sadly, we, we never got to do the second week um, because the school had to close. Uh, and during that time, also, I was auditioning for... For you know my next job um, uh, in different shows, uh, mainly tours actually. Oh right, okay. Um, and then sadly that all sort of ground to a halt. Um, I'd, I'd actually done my final auditions for two of those shows, um, and they'd been filmed and, and they were being sent off to the producers uh, in America, and wow. then and then it just all stopped. So we're still we're, we're technically still at that stage. <laughs> right. So <laughs> everything's just sort of been paused. Yeah, and, and, and I guess the uncertainty of, of theatre at the moment is something that's affecting, I guess, everyone involved in all aspects of theatre, whether all that's aspects, professional, yes. and even, yeah. even like, you know, the amateurs who, who use theatre as a, you know, a massive Absolutely. part of their life, everyone's yeah. experiencing the same thing. But yeah, I guess as, as a, from a career point of view, literally treading water, mm. um, must be, must be, I don't know, it, I guess just very uncertain. It's a very strange time. Yeah, it is a very strange. Time. I was very. I've, I've been very lucky in the last couple of years. I've, I've managed to sort of keep working, and that's been brilliant as yeah. an actor. You know, you never really expect that. Um, so all of a sudden now to have no work and also no prospect of starting, or not knowing when that work's going to start again. Yeah. Um, but also not being able to, you know, sort of pick up those in between jobs. Um, mm. It does feel very strange because I think. As a performer, whether that's whether you're amateur or professional, I don't think it really matters. I think you always you do it because you love it and you want to keep doing it. And when you suddenly just can't do it because it doesn't exist, it feels very odd. You mentioned School of Rock there. Um, yeah. Was it very strange to kind of encounter Matt being down it's, there? Is- it was so bizarre. So I remember walking into my first audition at uh, the Umbrella Rooms just on Chasby Avenue. And yeah. You're nervous when you go into an audition, so you sort of, you know, you, you, you try and be as lovely as you can to everybody and say hello, and I sort of glanced and, and said hello to this guy at the keyboard and thought, I know him, but for, <laughs> for the life of it, because of the nerves, I just couldn't place why I knew him, and I, I did my audition, and I, we spoke to each other during the audition, and, you know, he, we, he got me to do singing in different ways, and... And then at the recall, the same thing happened, and I still couldn't play. And I, it wasn't until my final audition that yeah. I realised who he was and why I knew him from, yeah. obviously, from the Faraway Tree. Well, I was talking to Matt about the the Magic Faraway Tree, and and yeah. you know, it's it's very very weird that you obviously were the main, the main you know character yes, main yes. in in that. And um, <laughs> yeah. so so when you finally so started talking to him, said, I remember where I know you. From. Was it you who said it to him? Yes, and it wasn't until we actually got into, till I got the job and we got into rehearsals and I said to him, I'm really, I said, I'm really sorry, you must have thought I was so weird in the auditions because I, I didn't let on, I, I didn't know why I knew you, but <laughs> we both then 
remembered. Um, and it kind of it was weird that it kind of came full circle because obviously I was in Faraway Tree with, yeah. with uh, Matt, and then uh, ended up working in School of Rock with him. And then whilst I was in School of Rock, I did um, some recordings for a new piece that he's working on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it sort of like came full circle. It's just it's just such a small world. It's industry. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess it is, isn't it? it and, and that's obviously from the extreme of you guys being quite young and developing your skills I suppose you know yes, when you're yeah. when you're a young man performing in the theatre um so would School of Rock kind of be the biggest thing so far you say that you would have done or has there been bigger things or yeah, where, where well, does it kind of rank my first, well, School of Rock is my first West End um previous to that I was in School of Rock for uh, just over a year and a half yeah. um previous you to have, you that you have toured I, haven't you I did I toured in Mamma Mia yeah yeah Yes, so um, Mamma Mia was sort of my first, first big job, really. Um, that was out of, because I, I went back and retrained at the Royal Academy of Music um, in just a year in musical theatre, and then um, Mamma Mia came along after that. So, um, but yeah, it, it's not been an easy ride, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> from going to drama school at the age of 18 until sort of my early 30s, it was it was a real struggle. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with how things are, at the, well, how things have been in the yeah. last couple of years, but yeah. Is musical theatre then very much your, that is your game, you, you don't kind of widen the field in terms of other areas of acting? Um, I think I focused a lot more on musical theatre just because it's my passion mm. um, and I feel I love I love the buzz there's, I mean honestly there's nothing like uh, you know Saturday Night in the West End just being on that stuff or any any stage actually not just you know those big West End, West End shows are great but uh, you know being on stage in front of 40 people and, and getting that live buzz that feed from the audience is, is awesome um, much more so than I think I would probably feel if it were record it you know television or, or film yeah. um i know some people love that um i know one of our other patrons kerry uh, bennett she, yeah she you know she's done a lot of television and stuff and that's really her bag she loves that and um, I, was, I was talking to andy uh, andy moss and he was andy talk- moss, of course. he was talking to yeah. me about um when he left hollyoaks and he, he said he was there for like eight or nine years and he was used to doing 13, 14 hour days and he said um, yeah. when he got a job in musical theatre this is going to be good because I'm going to have to do three hours on a, on a, a, of a night time <laughs> and he said you know he said he just didn't really I mean you know obviously I suppose he did really realise but he just said the respect he had you know for the musical theatre performers and yeah, doing eight tough. shows a week yeah press because yeah. i think that was the other thing you know the, the press side of it and you've always got to keep the interest going and mm-hmm. and that sort of thing so um yeah. I, I mean like you say it's, it is hard work isn't it people talk about musical theater and you know and and the fun and that's great but you've still yeah. got to work hard haven't you to, to perfect you your skills yeah yeah and i think the thing that i've realized since sort of working more um in in bigger shows is that it's not just about those those four hours that you're in the theater for for your show or you know or a whole day if it's a two show day but yeah. um it's also the fact that you know throughout the day you might you know the way that you you look after your voice your body uh, going to the gym all of that sort of stuff it, it kind of it becomes a 24 7 thing that you have to think about um and also it's the working pattern you know you lose your evenings um and in school of rock i did sunday shows um right. and weirdly we had tuesday night off <laughs> all right okay <laughs> so so it's that as well the fact that you know your whole sort of your whole timetable changes can you prepare for that mentally or is it just wow this is just i'm in that situation now and i've lost my weekends and I wish I got out yeah, last I weekend think, as a. <laughs> I don't think you can. Yeah, I don't think you can prepare for it mentally. But I think so long as you enjoy what you're doing, you you find ways and you know ways of making it work for you. Did you enjoy the touring element of performing more than the residency, or or are there kind of p- p- pros and cons to both of them? There are definitely pros and cons to both. Um, being in, in School of Rock, in I was our theatre was just on the edge of Covent Garden, and I lived in Brixton, so that was really cool. I got to, you know really got to sort of live. London life and, and living in central London it was brilliant yeah. and it was a lot of fun and also you have that sort of that feeling of being a bit more settled you're in one place you're doing your job you go to work you do your job and you can have a bit more of a of a regular life I suppose yeah. um but on tour um you get to see lots of other places um it's a bit more exciting you kind of as well on tour you I suppose you gel with your cast a little bit more because you're all out there together mm you're all touring together you're all um living together working together so um that side of touring i really enjoyed i actually 
one thing I really got into in Mamma Mia, touring all over the country, was finding different coffee shops. Oh, really? Because <laughs> I love coffee. That so became your thing, did it? That became my thing, yeah. Leeds. Leeds and Sheffield are fantastic. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Would you fancy ever taking a, a trip abroad and, and doing anything, you know, out, out of the UK? Is that something that you've got ambitions for or possibilities well, for? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say no to Broadway, you know. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> One day. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I have done quite a lot of work um, around the I was very fortunate before I went into Mamma Mia, I was doing a show called uh, Walk Like a Man. Yes. Which um, we got... Fl- oh, yes, we came to Romley. You did point. indeed, I remember. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, we, um, we, we, it was fantastic. We got flown all over the world to join uh, cruise ships. So we'd wow. go and do like four days or a week on a cruise ship, do a few shows and get flown back. So I, with that, I went to um, South America, um, gosh, where else? Middle East, all over Europe, uh, North America. So that was, that was really cool. Is it easier to, once you're, in, once you're in the industry, is it easier for you to stay in it and to work? Was the hardest bit making that initial breakthrough? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think it's just it's so much about timing and luck and who you know. I know that it's that old thing of it's not what you know, it's who you know, but it really is um, a case of just somebody taking that first punt and, you know, that first chance with you. Um, and luckily for me, that sort of came with Mamma Mia. Yeah. Um, and also, I just, I just I got a little bit older, so I, I started to suit the role that they wanted to consider me for. So, um, yeah, I think it, it's, it's timing and it's luck. But once you get that first break... Um, for me, going from Mamma Mia into uh, School of Rock was because it was the same casting director, David Grindrod. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> so that really helped me to be able to go from from one to the next. Do you think as well that a lot of young people, you know, straight from drama school, straight from performing arts school, want to get straight into musical theatre? You've talked there about it happened for you a little bit older. Is mm. that something that was there a point where you thought? It's just not happening for me. I, I need to go and get a proper job or, yeah. or anything like that. You know, what, what advice would you give to, you know, someone determined to, to work in the industry? It, it is tough. It is so tough. And I think if you can have other things that you can do and that you like doing, mm. do have that. I always, um, I've always taught as well. So I've always gone back and taught at drama schools and, and things like that. Um, just because I, I love, you know, been in rehearsal rooms um i play piano as well okay. so um, i can teach singing uh, whilst i was at the royal academy i did a, a teaching certificate yeah uh, to teach singing so i've always done that so i sort of kept myself in there but i must admit just before i auditioned for mamma mia i did there was a, a a time when i was thinking i don't want to do this anymore it's too hard i was getting to finals for so many shows wicked and, mm. and les mis and um and then being told, you know, oh, not this year, maybe next time. And it just, it got, it really took its toll. Um, so I was considering giving it up. And then I suddenly got Mamma Mia and that all sort of changed. But um, I think my top advice would be have other things that you love doing yeah. that are maybe related or completely unrelated to performing. Um, uh, and, and also, you know, just give it time. It, it, it is different for everyone. And whilst people are, are giving it time, is it important to continue to perform in any element of, of the industry? You know, whether that is doing plays, doing musicals, um, you know, yeah, is that think, something yeah, that you I think, think... I think it's important to keep your skills up, definitely, definitely. Mm. And also by doing that, you just never know who you're going to meet. You never know who might see you doing something. Um, I do think that actually... Um, I, I auditioned for Mamma Mia quite soon after I'd been in a parade at the Hope Mill Theatre in yeah, Manchester, yeah. Uh, which I was I'm so proud of that production. I, I loved it. Um, and uh, a couple of people had been to see that who I then ended up sort of meeting later on and, you know, sort of said, oh, that was such a fantastic production. You know, we, we saw you in that. So whilst that was, you know, a, a quite an experimental fringe production back in Manchester that I didn't really expect would launch me into anything i think it probably did help because it got such good reviews uh, you know people saw it um so yeah you just never know you never know so yeah you've got to you've got to take opportunities and and also keep learning keep keep practicing what you've what you've learned and you're and honing your skills it's great for somebody who's who lives it and is in there and understands the industry you know to kind of off, offer that advice and i suppose when you did parade it was more for you than it was for oh this could be a stepping stone yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 
I wanted to do something. I love the musical. Um, I love Jason Robert Brown. Um, and I just, yeah, I wanted to do something for me creatively. I think I, I felt as though I was getting a bit um, stilted. You know, I, w- I was teaching a lot, which was great, but um, I wanted to do something. Um, and so, I, yeah, I took a bit of a chance, did it, and it paid off, I think. Which is great. And it's, uh, it, like you say, that, that path has been has been a brilliant a brilliant one that you've that you've walked on, and, and I do certainly hope that obviously once things are a little bit clearer, um, you've obviously got tapes in the pipeline, sat in a, sat in America in some producer's office uh, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So fingers crossed, there, James. That yes, you know you, w- once everything's you. up and running, um, you'll yes. you'll be diving back in, and whether that's on the West End or touring, and obviously if you do get the yeah. chance uh, to come and see us once all this is over, I know uh, we'd love to see you. So. That'd That's it. I would love to do that. I would love to do that. I said that. Uh, I spoke to Kerry the other day, and I yeah. said, you know, now that, I, that now that I've got a bit more freedom, hopefully, um, once things are back and up and running, and everyone's able to get back to NK, yeah. um, I can come over and say hi. That'd be really good. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Well, you you take care, James, and lots of love to the family. And you take care, buddy. Thank you. Take care.